In the last video, I had mentioned that as part of a model railway project, I would share some of the buildings that I've been making. So this is for that purpose. Um, here you have some of the buildings that I've been working on for a couple of years now, off and on, when the mood's taken me. Um, they're all scratch built, and I want to give you a little bit of background to the philosophy and how I've made them, and so on. Well, first of all, the, the layout is uh, set in the 1960s in the northeast region, uh, and a bit like an episode of the TV detective show Vera, it'll have lots of local landmarks, but not necessarily in the right location. These are buildings that I remember from my youth, or just buildings that uh, are still around so I can actually get there to make measurements. Most of the research is done from photographs, um, and it's quite laborious, but an enjoyable part of the process, counting bricks, um, measuring doorways, and then using those as multipliers to work out the dimensions of the buildings. I think the name of the layout will be Wellington Street, because that's the street that the Gateshead East Station um, was accessed uh, from. This is a, a building, a model inspired by that station, which was actually much, much larger than this and actually formed the top floor of quite a large building. But the architectural pattern here you see, I've only done two repeats of it. Went on, I think, for five or six um, repeats to make it actually quite a substantial building. But to fit it into the layout, um, I've just gone with two of them. You'll notice that it's boarded up. The entrances to the waiting rooms and the ticket office are actually boarded up. And that's because by the mid-60s, uh, trains just ran through. Uh, you could get onto them, but you paid for the ticket on board the train. This is the entrance to that plat uh, to the platform from the lower street level, and I've actually modelled that entrance here. This is the Wellington Street entrance for the station. It still exists, although it's a pizza fast food outlet now. Now. A little bit about the materials and how I've made this. It's made uh, by taking advantage of the characteristics of a blue foam that's used for insulation in under floor insulating when putting heating in. The foam's lightweight, but it's quite dense, and it has the advantage that you can actually scribe into it to form the stonework. Now, in some cases, if you want quite coarse stonework, it's possible to just simply using a dental tool to scribe into it directly and then paint it. And then you get quite a coarse texture as I've used for one of these um, inlays that actually goes through a tunnel. In the case of the station entrance, I've actually applied over the surface of it this material, which is Polycell Advanced Lightweight Filler. You actually know if you've got the right filler because when you pick the tub up, it's extremely light. What I do is I apply a layer of that filler over the surface of the blue foam, let it dry, and that takes about... 24 hours and then scribe onto it the brickwork patterns. I actually draw them on first in pencil so I can keep track of what I'm doing. And then once again, using the dental burr, I can scribe into the surface to create the stonework. And that's the process that I've used in putting together these occupied arches of which the station sits atop. Another material that I use extensively is actually something called grey board. Years ago, it was the sort of boarding that was put on the back of um, A4 packs of paper. 
But you can buy this. You can see I bought this from uh, CNM Three Models. You can buy it online. You don't have to purchase it from this establishment. Uh, but that was a nice pack there of different thicknesses and grades. Now this cuts very easily with a new um, scalpel blade. And then after I've actually cut the windows out and the doorway shapes out and so on, I use knotting solution to paint over the surface. Three or four coats, the first one just soaks in dramatically. And this has the effect of really toughening up the card. And it makes it uh, very resistant to changes in amb ambient temperature and moisture, which can be a problem with card based models. On top of that, I'm then able to utilize plastic card. In this case, these are uh, buildings that no longer exist, but were part of a, uh, a street area in Gateshead going down towards the quayside. They are no longer there. And I use plastic card to, to um, overlay the brickwork. I've used um, the polyfiller to create this stonework and that awful blackened uh, soot, sooty stonework that I remember from my youth. Um, and the pavements are simply um, grey board that's been cut out into the flags and laid in. All these buildings light up. And that will form part of the backdrop to the back of the layout. This building's rather interesting. It's, um, as I remember it, the Palace Cinema, when it was being used as a warehouse by a glass company called Elders and Walkers on Sunderland Road in Gateshead. Um, it was boarded up and in a sorry state, but it was still had a sort of air of gr decaying grandeur. Um, greyboard core, plastic overlay, and then for the plaster work that's decaying and falling away, I've overlaid the polyfiller onto the brickwork and then chipped it away when it was dry. All the, the fancy bits and pieces are just um, little items that I've added uh, with plastic card. All the tiling on these buildings... Um, is done by paper. Paper strips with the individual tiles cut out and then quite laboriously they've been added one at a time. Those people who know the Gateshead Newcastle area may recognise this building. It's known locally as the Coffin. It's um, the central bar in Gateshead near to the high level bridge uh, and the Tyne Bridge. This is as it was when it was painted up in sort of hideous cream and oxblood colour, with this all with the flaking paint as well. Uh, that's now all been sandblasted off and it's been generally tidied up and cleaned up. Uh, this will fall, this will actually sit right at the back of the layout. It's only posh part of it, but the most distinctive shape. And I still have the sign for the name of the bar to, to add on to it. These large structures here are uh, bonded warehouses which have now been turned into flats and uh, fancy apartments in the Newcastle side on Hanover Street. Um, once again I was able to find old photographs that had been taken and I was able to model and work out the dimensions of part of the buildings. They were huge things but they will form a scenic block which will allow locomotives to ride behind and reappear to add to the interest. And finally, um, these buildings here uh, will make up part of the Scottish and Newcastle Brewery. And for a structure which was enormous, uh, 18, no sorry, 14 acres in size, but it's very, very difficult to find any photographs of the buildings as they were obviously because it was a private establishment but I've managed to find a few and these are a couple of them um, this building here I modeled but didn't really know what it was so I asked some questions on the a forum and somebody kindly told me that it was an ammonia chilling plant and the pipe work that you find all over the structures that I'm modeling 
was used to keep the yeast from dying off with higher temperatures. So it was used to chill the vats and so on. And sorry, there's, a, there's one more here that I forgot about. Um, I wanted a signal box on the layout. And this is a local one from, I think, I believe the Camus line. It's quite a brutal sort of design, very functional. But it was interesting to make because I had to jig up these railings using um, a little bit of ingenuity and some wire and some soldering. And it produced, an, it, I hope, uh, an interesting little build that fully lights up. And you can just see a chap pointing to an oncoming train on the way. I hope that gives an insight into what I've been busy with and find it interesting. I think once you're a modeler, you're a modeler. Um, so I hope, it, even if this isn't your cup of tea, I hope you like the idea of what I'm working on. Thank you.